Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And today we're going to continue our Venom Versus series. We got two episodes left. Uh, this episode is going to focus on this crazy crossover from Top Cow and Marvel. I think this was back in like the mid 2000s or something, uh, written by Dan Abnett and Andy Lanning and art by Tyler Kirkham. And the story is called Cyberforce, Hunter Killer, Avengers, Thunderbolts, Fusion. So it's basically a melding of these four teams. Uh, Cyber Force is like a, kind of like the X-Men of the Top Cow universe almost. It's a bunch of metahumans that like team up and have uh, cool powers, but they also look very different uh, than the outside world. Uh, but then also you have Hunter Killer, who's like this top secret government, uh, you know, uh, secret CIA type of thing, uh, like Men in Black style, but they're also, you know, have weapons and, and look awesome and have like, you know, gear and everything and metal parts and all that stuff. Um, and then you have the Avengers, obviously we know who they are, and the Thunderbolts. And this is when Matt Gargan was uh, Venom and he was a member of the Thunderbolts. So we already talked about and covered that whole era of uh, storylines, but we missed out on this one and I wanted to save it for the, uh, for the Versus series uh, because I thought this was a neat crossover. Um, it was, you know, I've worked the Top Cow before, uh, very awesome people over there and uh, and I didn't work there while this was happening but I was a fan of all their books while this was going on and when this came out I was like I can't miss this uh, it has the Thunderbolts in it and I was really enjoying the Thunderbolts at that time uh, but it also had a bunch of other characters in it uh, that I wanted to, to learn more about like Hunter Killer I wasn't fully familiar with them Cyberforce I knew but Hunter Killer I wasn't fully uh, you know didn't know too much about them so it was kind of neat to dive in and learn about them because the book starts off with one of them this is Ellis and he's a member of them and he's kind of like their Hulk in a way he's an ultra sapien he's got a lot of power and he's basically left the team uh, you know for right now he's kind of on the run doing his whole hulk thing where he's like all right i gotta stay away from people i want to keep them safe and everything like that so he's out there doing his own thing and that's when something comes across him out in the wilderness or out in the snow he's kind of like you know staying in this abandoned town and he's like he hears something creeping up on him and he's like what is that and then that's where the story starts um and it go cuts back to avengers it gives you a little bit of history on the avengers uh and it tells you about how they were put together after the superhero registration act so this is after Captain America died and uh, the Avengers are in the spotlight. They fought the mole people in the Mighty Avengers comic and, you know, Iron Man put together his team of Avengers, which in this book consists of Iron Man, Black Widow, Miss Marvel, not Captain Marvel yet, uh, the Wasp, Ares, the God of War, and uh, Wonder Man. So that's like the six members there. Then you also have the Thunderbolts members, which are Penance, Swordsman, Moonstone, Bullseye, Radioactive Man, Venom, and Norman Osborn. Uh, then on the Top Cow side, we have Cyberforce, which is Ripclaw, Velocity, Cyblade, Heatwave, and Ballistic. Um, all these characters have crossed over to Marvel before, so this isn't like, uh, oh, we opened a portal to another dimension and those characters came in. They pretty much just treat it like the, uh, the Cyber Force characters and the Hunter Killer characters just exist in the same universe as the Marvel characters. And they're unregistered heroes or unregistered, you know, superheroes uh, with powers. So this is Iron Man going around trying to recruit people, being like, hey, you got to sign up, you got to register. Um, and that's kind of how this story kind of kicks off. Uh, and and this like shared threat that kind of affects both teams. So the hunter killer team is Ellis, who's the guy we just saw um, at the beginning of the story. Samantha Argent, Wolf, and Morningstar. So those are the four like CIA operative type people that are part of uh, Hunter Killer. So anyway, the the team you know the book starts off and it has uh, this big threat that comes out of nowhere. The Avengers are on their way back from a mission, and then uh, like a truck gets thrown at them, <laughs> just coincidentally, and uh, and they find this uh, creature that looks like Ripclaw from the Cyberforce team. And it's not Ripclaw, though, uh, but he is a symbiote. There's like some kind of symbiote that attached itself to someone. We don't know yet, but they attach themselves to someone. It looks like they're superhuman, um, and it added power to the symbiote. So Miss Marvel comes in. She's like the big gun on the team and next to Ares, you know, an Iron Man, I guess. And she comes in and takes the first attack, but she gets pummeled uh, by this creature and this creature knocks her out. So everyone's like, all right, that's our first, you know, top member. What's going to happen now? So Natasha comes in and she hits these pressure points and nerve points using like her, you know, killer training. Um, and all it does is it hurts the guy, but it doesn't kill him. She hit all these, you know, nerve points and stuff like that, but it, it only made him angry. <laughs> uh, so then Captain Marvel shows back up or Miss Marvel shows back up with Wonder Man and they take down this creature and knock him out. Uh, but he still gets away from them and he, he like evades their, their further attacks. Um, and he's like crushing through this town. So the Avengers are trying to help with the, the, the collateral damage. They're like, all right, the creature got away, but there are people here that are hurt. Let's, you know, take care of them first. And the creature is somewhere out of the city. 
That's all we care about. We'll find it before it gets to the next city, but let's just make sure that nobody dies uh, with all this collateral damage. So while the Avengers are taking care of that, the Thunderbolts show up under the you know uh, leadership of Norman Osborn, and they're like, all right, you know what? There's a creature loose. Let's go get it. <laughs> and you see Venom back there, uh, kind of like a like a watchdog. He's kind of like uh, sniffing around, like, all right, we got to find this thing. So um, while that's happening, you also have uh, the Cyber Force team. This is Ripclaw, and they start to notice that he's acting differently. He's starting to freak out. Um, he's having these spasms and these uh, wild attacks, and they learn that it's because he has some kind of connection to the beast that got away. And the beast is sitting here eating a deer, and you have Venom coming in going, wow, I'm never going to see, or maybe it's Venom, I think, may, I don't know who's talking, but they're like, I got, I'm never going to watch Bambi the same way again. And you have this creature eating uh, this, you know, this deer. And then that's when the Thunderbolts show up, and Penance hits it with a blast, and then Venom jumps on top of him and just pummels his head into the ground and knocks him unconscious. Uh, so uh, once that's done, they capture him and they bring him back to Thunderbolts Mountain. And then as this is happening, this is when the Avengers make their way to uh, Mesquite Island, which is where the Cyber Force team is. And they're like, hey, we saw this creature. It kind of reminds me of you, Ripclaw. And uh, and we want to get some answers. We lost it in the wilderness somewhere and we need to get answers. And at this moment, that's when Ripclaw goes insane uh, and he starts attacking the Avengers. The second issue starts off with Ripclaw, you know, tearing into the Avengers. He's fighting them. He's kicking the crap out of them, actually. He actually cuts Iron Man's armor. And they're like, all right, we got to calm him down. We got to calm him down. So Ares jumps in, they knock him out, uh, and then the Cy you know, Cyber Force team shows up, and they're, uh, you know, they're like, hey, you know, what's going on out here? He, that's a member of our team, and you know, he went a little crazy, but just calm down, give him a chance. So uh, while this is happening, you know, there's some people trying to talk rational, but mostly everyone's just fighting each other. Ares is fighting, uh, you know, everyone. They're all, <laughs> everyone's getting this big battle, um, and then uh, then they finally stop. But clear heads prevail, and they start talking as they always do in these comics. Uh, but it's kind of fun, and then you have, uh, you know, Ripclaw explaining, look, there's a symbiote thing out there it's kind of like me i'm connected to it i have like an emotional connection to it and anything it does i can see so i saw that it was captured by the thunderbolts and it's now at thunderbolts uh you know mountain and uh, you know tony's like oh god so we got to go deal with norman osborne now he's like all right well he's kind of got his own jurisdiction he works for the branch of the government that i'm not in control of really uh, i can we can play nice and we can go there and try to get answers but i don't know if he's going to give up your friend uh your this this creature easily and they're like yeah this creature is kind of a friend of ours he bonded with ellis from the you know, hunter killer team. So that's what brings the hunter killer units, you know, and characters into this is that Ellis was the one at the beginning of the story, he gets jumped by this crazy symbiote thing, not Venom symbiote, but this Ripclaw type symbiote and it's taken over him and it's using his powers to enhance itself. So that's something that it does kind of like how Venom does where it could transfer some of Spider-Man's abilities over to Eddie Brock. This symbiote is, you know, now has this ultra sapien and Ellis and has its abilities. Um, and so while that's happening, Venom decides to sneak in, you know, the Avengers are on their way uh, but Venom is like you know what I want to get a piece of this thing I want to see what it's about because I can sense that it's kind of symbiotic in its nature as well and I want to get some answers and then as he goes over to kind of like peel the layers back literally by like you know peeling its brain open uh, the creature emerges from Ellis and bonds with uh, the symbiote and, and Mac Gargan. So as the Avengers show up, they're like, all right, look, Norman, we just want to play nice. You know, don't be a jerk. We have these uh, beings here called Cyberforce. We're going to bring them in. They know something about the creature. This is for public safety. Please just play nice with me. And Norman Osborn's like, yeah, sure, okay, come on in. And he's like, like keep an eye on the Avengers. Keep all of them out here. I'm just going to take Ripclaw and Iron Man in, and that's it. Everybody else stays out here. And then, of course, when they do, Ripclaw starts freaking out again, and he's having another attack, and that's when Iron Man... Uh, has to take him down but before they get a chance uh the symbiote shows up now that it's possessed by the other the ripclaw symbiote now matt gargan symbiote shows up uh fully possessed and it eats iron man <laughs> it just comes in and eats iron man and uh, while ripclaw's freaking out so norman osborne's like um help anybody uh so that's how issue two ends and the final issue number three here uh just picks up right where that left off and you have norman osborne seeing you know tony stark getting swallowed by the creature and ripclaw freaking out and you know he's calling in for backup he's like guardsman everyone show up get in here uh fight this thing and he starts calling his team moonstone so you know songbird uh detain them they they brought some kind of creature in uh, i don't know what's happening you know fight them off so heat wave and everyone they start attacking and it's basically you know uh the cyber force versus the thunderbolts along with the avengers helping out um you know helping out the cyber force people so you get this big spread here of everybody fighting um so yeah it's kind of a fun book not a very deep storyline but it's kind of fun and i think some of the threads that are left over from this actually play out 
in future books for Top Cow, which is kind of fun. So none of this has any ramifications really on the Marvel Universe, but it does have some ramifications for the Top Cow stuff. Um, so yeah, so fun stuff, especially if you follow Top Cow books. Uh, some of the threads we'll get to in a minute, they, they'll pick up in other books that come out later on. Uh, so yeah, Ares and everyone's fighting. Uh, they get, Penance gets his attack in there. I love Penance. He's such a cool character. Um, and then uh, and then Ellis, you know, wakes up. He realizes what happens. Uh, the symbiote, uh, the Rib Claw symbiote has now left him. It has his powers though and it's bonded with the uh you know matt gargan and his symbiote and he sees that now look at this and it even grew to you know triple the four you know quadruple the size it normally is it's it's basically giant man size and it's tearing apart all the teams now and so all the teams are working together trying to take this thing down but ellis is like look all i need to do is i need to you know get in touch with the uh the you know the creature the symbiote because the actual matt gargan symbiote it spit matt gargan out so it shoots him out and Ellis sees that and he's like, well, now I can use Matt Gargan to tap into the symbiote. So he goes over to Matt Gargan. He's like, teach me how to talk to your symbiote. Show me how to do it. And then once Matt Gargan opens his eyes, he shows you know, Ellis how to do it. And then Ellis uses his power to go in and separate uh, the Venom symbiote from the Ripclaw symbiote. And then as he does it, he tells everybody, hit it with everything you got. Um, Psyblade comes in. She's like, kill it. Like, we can't let it get away. And they do, and they explode it and kill it as the uh, Matt Gargan Venom symbiote goes back to Matt Gargan. So it's safe, uh, but the Ripclaw symbiote is not, and it gets torn apart and blown to pieces. Um, so at this point, that's when Tony Stark, you know, shakes uh, Ripclaw's hand. He says, hey, look, now you won't have any more spasms. You'll be fine from now on out. Uh, I can't, you know, I'm, I'm going to give you a pass this time. But I'm going to urge you guys, please register at some point, be registered heroes, um, you know, especially with Norman Osborn out there. I can't protect you if you're unregistered. He's going to keep trying to hunt you down. Uh, but, you know, since you've helped me out in the past and you're helping me out with this situation and I try to help you out in this situation, um, you know, we're, we're, we're allies here. But please, you know, uh, don't you know screw this up and please register as soon as you can so that I can continue to help you against people like Norman Osborn. And of course, we have calls like, yeah, I don't know, not for us. registration is not for us. Uh, and so they kind of wish each other luck. And then meanwhile, Norman Osborn goes and talks to Moonstone and she's able to find a sample of that symbiote still left alive that wasn't burned up and destroyed by the Avengers um, after it exploded in Cyberforce. They kind of burned it all to a crisp, but there's one little piece that was left over. So uh, Norman Osborn contacts Morningstar over at Hunter Killer and says, hey, I have something that might interest you, old friend. I owed you a favor from a while ago and I'm here to collect on it. So here, if you want, I'll send you this sample. And I believe that picks up in other Hunter Killer books that came out after this and they kind of touch on that thread a little bit. Um, and I think maybe Abnett Landing wrote that, but I, I can't remember. Uh, so yeah, and then you have Ellis going back into, you know, uh, seclusion and going back out into the world, uh, trying to hide from it as well. So yeah, pretty fun storyline. I liked it overall. I mean, it's not super great writing, especially from Abnett and Landing, who I think are phenomenal writers. I love a lot of the stuff they've done at Marvel Comics, um, but I don't think they work together anymore. They, I think they had like some kind of falling out. I'm not sure. I don't want to comment on that. I don't really know, um, but uh, I don't see their names on books together anymore. Uh, which is a shame because I feel like they're very talented together, but they're also talented separate. And I, I do pick up books that have their names on them. So uh, it was fun. And I think I even have this one signed uh, too. Uh, but uh, yeah, and the artwork's pretty good by Tyler Kirkham. I like his style. Um, it's kind of inconsistent on a couple pages, but mostly it's, you know, pretty great. And this this spread here with the, the giant uh, symbiotes merged, fighting all the teams is so fantastic. It looks awesome. So yeah, if you haven't picked these up, I don't think you can find them. They might have been collected in a trade paperback at some point, but I don't remember what it's called. Um, and I don't think these exist digitally either. I'm not so sure. So I would say you have to find them and pick them up online. Maybe, uh, you know, I spent like, yeah, I think you can buy them for like a dollar or two each issue and back issue bins, um, but you're gonna have to track them down somewhere. Maybe Mile High Comics is a good place to track them down. Uh, but yeah, uh, if you wanna complete your Venom collection or complete your Cyber Force or Hunter Killer collection or Avengers collection, uh, this will, you know, satisfy that for sure. Uh, it's definitely a fun read. So let me know what you think. If you've read this book before, I'd love to hear thoughts down below. And if you haven't, if you're curious about anything, something I didn't explain well enough, uh, let me know down below and we'll continue our conversation down there. We have one more episode left to go for the Venom Versa stuff. It's going to be our Avengers Death Trap The Vault. I'm going to record that another day. I got these two episodes done today, but I'm going to save that for another day. Um, I have a day off coming up, so I'll do it then. I'm really tired right now and I got to go to work soon, so uh, I got to wrap this up for you guys. So thank you so much, as always, for watching the show. I really do appreciate it, and thanks for being so patient with me getting these episodes up. And I'll try to continue to get more episodes up every week, at least three or four Venom vlogs every week from here on forward. I'll do my best. So thank you so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in the future. Peace.